I am Peggy Parfenoff with World Chicago, and I'm delighted to be here with you today. World Chicago is a nonprofit organization that hosts emerging leaders from around the world. We get about a thousand emerging leaders from all over the world. You can find out more information on our website at worldchicago.org, and more details are on our screen right now. One of the programs we uh, work with is called the African Women Entrepreneurship Program, and it's a program of the International Visitor Leadership Program of the U.S. Department of State. So what this means is that 38 very talented African women who are entrepreneurs in their country, they are 38 women from about 35 countries, were invited to participate in this program. And they flew into Chicago earlier this week, spent a week with us talking to other women entrepreneurs, talking to people about communications, about marketing, about making your message. And they actually went to some of Chicago's shops and some of Chicago's uh, entrepreneurial locations so they could see how Chica an incubator, so they could see how Chicago uh, helps our entrepreneurs. And we decided to invite some of them on to CAN TV with us today to tell about their experience in Chicago and about their experience as an entrepreneur. So our first guest is Margaret Cadi, who is from Sierra Leone. Her company is Pangea, and I'm delighted to welcome you here. Welcome, Margaret. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very grateful. Well, tell us about how you got to start it and why you decided to become an entrepreneur instead of going to business. For sure, I'd love to. Um, well, I think I've always been, um, I've always had the entrepreneurial spirit, but I didn't know how it was going to manifest itself. So I went down the traditional route after university. I took a job and um, somehow I wasn't quite fulfilled. Um, and I always had this in the back of my mind that I wanted to run my own business. So um, in 2011, I took the leap. I quit my job and decided to set up my own business called Pangea. And we specialize in locally made, made in Sierra Leone products. And our product ranges include furniture, home decor, and fashion accessories. And we pride ourselves in the fact that we use locally sourced materials to make all our products. And um, of course, we use local, local artisans who work for us. They're all highly skilled in the various fields that we, we work within, um, i.e. furniture making, weaving, um, sewing. And you have some products with yes, you today? Yes, I do. Let me so, hold some up while you're speaking for about For sure. It. And this is um, one of our hand-woven table runners. Ah, look at that fabulous <laughs> table runner. So oh. we, do, we do them in different colors. Um, and they're just great. wonderful and very easy to travel with, very light. Yeah, and um, yeah, and just to warm up the room, really. Um, another thing that we do, is this beautiful necklace. Oh, that is gorgeous. With the great bow on top <laughs> yes. and the wood beads in between the cloth. We That's make great. the beads, so, and obviously we do a lot of tailoring. So every time I make a dress and there's a piece of fabric left, I make necklaces to match. Ah, excellent. <laughs> well, that's um, so great. Thank you. Another piece that we do, these are made out of um, rattan. So ah, it's just cane. So but they're coasters. Some, uh, coasters for the yes, table. Yes, for ah, the table. Okay. Excellent. So, oh, good. Yes, and one and of our... Fun items, I'm sorry, yeah. is um, a sleeping mask. Ah, of course. Yeah, everyone <laughs> so needs So you can travel these, in right? style. <laughs> With beautiful batik fabric yes, made in Sierra yes, Leone. Yes, yes, Now, how does being a woman entrepreneur uh, impact you in Sierra Leone? You just had a war recently, so tell us about that. For sure. Um, it's not the easiest of places to do business, but um, I'm very grateful with the progress we've made so far. Um, we've been through a lot as a country. Um, we struggled to recover from a, a 10 year civil war that we had in the 90s. And we've recently, um, we're tr recently trying to recover from the Ebola epidemic. Uh, so, and that affected businesses like mine um, a great deal. So, um, but um, thankfully, we're on the right path and um, the government has put in place um, initiatives that are helping SMEs like myself. So, um, so far, so good. It's not good. too bad. And what do you hope to gain out of your time in the United States here? I'm so, so grateful um, to be here, to be representing Sierra Leone as part of um, a web 2016. And um, so far, 
every day has been a wonderful blessing and each day has been better than the day before. <laughs> Good. Um, Good to hear. Um, so, and we've just m met the most extraordinary group of women so far. Um, and it's quite comforting knowing that um, you're not in the struggle alone. Um, first of all, the, the other women in the AWEP program, I'm so, so thankful to, to meet all of them. And I'm learning so much um, from them. Um, we all come from different parts of Africa, but we all have the same challenges. Um, and it's the same thing that I found out when we met some of the business owners in Chicago yesterday. They have the same struggles as we do. So um, we are trying to um, harness our power together, see how we can best work together, build relationships, and um, and see if there's a um, an appetite for what we we provide in Africa. Excellent. Well, congratulations, um, <laughs> Marguerite. Kept talking about the uh, Margaret talking about the AWEP program, uh, which was our African Women Entrepreneurship Program, and we tend to put it together in an acronym for AWEP. Um, so what, um, what can you talk about the similarities between business in Chicago and in Sierra Leone or some of the differences? For sure. Um, yesterday we were very grateful to visit um, a business incubator. And one thing that struck out for me was the fact that, um, the, I mean, the same businesses that are, um, the same problems businesses have here are very similar to what I have in Sierra Leone. Um, but one one thing that stood out was the fact that um, we are so far removed from um, what is required by the international market. And I think um, with the knowledge that I hope to, to gain from this experience, what I will take back to my country, I hope I can find a way to, um, to engage other businesses and show them best practices and see how we can be more involved in the international world. Excellent. Well, we hope we hope to keep hearing more about you and about Pangea Designs and uh, see your products on the market in Chicago soon. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, right now you have products in, in your capital? For yes, town, I have a retail store there. So. Ah, and a retail store yes, and in yes. some products. Uh, yes. And we also have um, a display of our goods in the Radisson Blue Hotel Excellent. in Freetown. Excellent. Well, that's that's a we have a beautiful <laughs> Radisson Blue here as well. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us, Margaret, and we're going to put on one of your colleagues now. But again, this is um, World Chicago is talking about our African Women Entrepreneurship Program, which is a program of the U.S. Department of State uh, International Visitor Leadership Program. And World Chicago is the host organization here in Chicago that works with all our emerging leaders um, through the U.S. Department of State. And you can find out more at worldchicago.org. We have opportunities for Chicagoans to get involved with our programs. Uh, for some of the programs, we have women like these come to your home for dinner so they can sit down with a family in Chicago and uh, talk about uh, what it's like to be an American in an informal setting. Other visitors of ours stay with host families for two weeks to a month. So there's information about host family, host, homestay hosting on our website, which is a very wonderful experience to have an uh, African young person in your home for two weeks or uh, a tech entrepreneur from Croatia in your home for a month. So a lot of other opportunities with World Chicago. We encourage you to check it out. Um, now I'm delighted to introduce our next guest, Ange Noel Muko from Burundi, and her company, Kazoza. Uh, I'll <laughs> let you say it again, is that right? <clears throat> yeah, it's Kazoza Art. Kazoza Art. Yes. So tell us about your company. Why did you decide to become an entrepreneur in Burundi? Um, so I decided to be an entrepreneur in Burundi um, because I wanted to, I like working uh, with other people and I like to make uh, to contribute to make other people's world better I know it can it can sound um, <laughs> you know <laughs> but, but it, it's so yeah but that's Absolutely. really yeah. that's really my joy and I believe that my my life is better if it's bettering the lives of others well tell us how you do that how does Kazuza okay. Art make, work that? with other women okay yeah so Kazuza Art um, uh, how it what it how it does that? It's our slogan is a bright future for Burundian artisans. A bright future, future for, for Burundian, Burundian artisans. artisans. So right. not Burundian art, but artisans. So uh -huh. we, uh, there's a great focus on 
people and uh, what we do it's a it's a social enterprise that recruits um, trains and um, finances small artisans we train them in modern uh, craftsmanship and okay. we find them local and international uh, businesses who want to buy their products yes who wants to buy their, their products yes and it's um, we do that with the purpose of creating jobs and also mainly uh, alleviating poverty so that's Excellent. why I say that we, um, I want to contribute in making other people's lives better absolutely yes. well let's see some of the products that you make okay so the products that we make I'll categorize them in in three so there's uh -huh. um, there's a uh, fashion accessories like okay. jewelry. So we have a necklace and, and bracelet. These Magic. are made out of natural resources. So this is a local nut ah. that we sculpt and uh, we've recycled. We took former um, ivory uh, sculptures. Uh -huh. Since it's illegal, we right. recycled we that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hurt. No, no, no. So we've recycled that technique in ah. making. Um, this type of jewelry and uh, so we cut that and we have necklaces sorry ah. this is for the bracelet like what I'm wearing yeah. the necklace and oh, that's the fascinating. so this looks like one. a piece of plastic yeah but it's really a natural nut, no, it's a a nut, nut made yeah from that has been dyed nut. yes ah. Iranian nut and it's been dyed with clothes dye wow that's fascinating yeah. so it's pretty ecological and yeah. um, and again, fashionable at the same what time. What is the name of this nut? Um, it's called um, uh, takwa. Okay. And um, uh, but it's a it's a type of it comes from a type of palm tree, and um, nice. yeah. So the 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 commercial uh, word is uh, vegetable ivory. Vegetable ivory. Yes. Oh, what mm -hmm. a beautiful product. <laughs> That's great. Yes. Yeah, so and the second thing we make um, some some of the corporate uh, products that we do. So this is a way of um, it's a little. Um, um, hippo uh -huh. um, uh -huh. carved in wood uh -huh. and has Burundi in it, but then we've made it a small as business, a card, business holder. card holder. So you it's know? your business card holder that says Burundi <laughs> yes. and the uh, carved out yes, of the yeah. This is uh, wood. Uh, yeah, this is wood. Ah, so um, again, what we do most of the time, you find that artisans used to be doing uh, products, you know, that are cute to see but sometimes um, people won't be buying more because they don't see much use of it so right. if they only what see them as decorative or little souvenirs there won't be much chance of ordering more and more right and if you want them but to make a living out a of it yeah practical application exactly like practical holder. yeah and we get uh, corporations um, either having their uh, brands their you logo, know logo um, yeah carved yeah. in it and it doesn't have to be a hippo it can be something else but mm -hmm. that's just one of the examples of some little practical things, but it would be unique to have a hippo on your hippo card <laughs> holder on your desk. So exactly. that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Thing. And lastly, there's like this rug. Oh, um, what a beautiful rug. Yes. So and these this looks are, like it's crocheted. Yes, or? it's been crocheted, and it's just like um, leftover fabrics. Uh huh. And we just cut small pieces. It takes a lot of time, but it also provides work. So um, you yeah. get some young ladies who will come and cut pieces, and others who will be using basic sewing techniques, and then will be crocheting this. So that's good. And tell us about some of the ladies. Like who have you been able to work with and help out? Okay, so I've been working with younger ladies. Um, who some have not had a chance to uh, complete their education, some have done as little, either none at all or as little as primary school, and mm -hmm. also um, others who are maybe like sole income earners. We don't only work with women though, oh, okay. we also work with men because Excellent. we realize that if there's a, a, a man who works hard but who's not making a living, they're more subject to um, actually be harmful to uh, society out uh, of frustration right. because they're not providing for their families even right. though they're working. Right. Many yeah. of our problems in many societies are through unemployment and for yes. young people and yes. helping them yes. do that. Yeah. And, oh good, do you have a story about one of your young ladies that yeah. you worked with? Um, actually, speaking of young ladies, there's a, um, a young lady called Violette that um, um, I've been working with who didn't get a chance to comp to do uh, much in her education, uh, but um, has has come, has learned um, skills, and is really um, 
um, receive, receives really well and loves what she does. But the, the great story is that um, she's been able to pay for uh, school fees and school uh, material for her siblings, seven of her siblings. Seven and yes. siblings she's yeah. put through school. Oh, that's and, fabulous. And, um, and most of them are actually doing even better than herself. So um, out of um, craftsmanship, which in Kirundi, um, Peggy, would you won't believe the word that we have in of craftsmanship in in Kirin. It means technically joke. So a joke. yes, oh, joke. So oh, wow. our our purpose in in wanting to make a, a bright future for Burundian artisans is to remove that title, that of stigma of, yeah, it, of that joke, joke, and show that it's it's actually a good vocation and something that can make a. Um, change the life of someone and the lives of others Excellent. and uh, Violet is one among oh, many of our 144 artisans that are working 144 with, uh, yeah. women, uh, women and yeah, men you women employ. and men yes um, in the course of four years oh wow and what an impact I mean <laughs> yeah. Violet made on her siblings <laughs> mm -hmm. so what a great story yes. thank you so thank much you for too. sharing it thank was you great for to having, having us here yes we're mm -hmm. delighted you did yes and again this is Peggy with World Chicago and uh, we are talking to some of our African women entrepreneurs that are here on the um, International Visitor Leadership Program of the U.S. Department of State. Um, and World Chicago, this is just one of the programs that we host at World Chicago. We've also got youth leadership programs and we've got... Uh, uh, a fellowship program where we'll have some tech entrepreneurs come to Chicago for a month this fall. And we have events and activities to, so you can have the chance to meet amazing women like the, the women I have here with me today. Um, which brings me to our last uh, guest today. Angèle Makoudi is from Cameroon and her company is Mock Bijou. So she has a jewelry company. And we're also delighted that uh, joining us in the studio is Gerda Romain Chatelain, who is gonna help translate some of our answers since Cameroon is a French speaking country. So tell us, uh, Angèle, how did you decide to make jewelry? Uh, J'ai décidé de commencer une ligne de bijoux parce que depuis toute petite, je faisais mes bijoux toute seule et euh, j'ai travaillé pour euh, payer mes études assez longtemps pendant ma, ma, mon adolescence. Donc après mes études, je ne voulais pas du tout travailler pour une autre compagnie, donc j'ai décidé de commencer une ligne de bijoux parce que euh, j'avais de l'or entre les mains. Les bijoux sont vraiment uniques, ils sont vraiment très beaux et je devais les mettre sur le marché. I decided to um, produce a jewelry because since I was very small, I've always liked working with jewelry. Um, and um, while I was um, a teenager, I paid for my studies by making and selling jewelry. Mm -hmm. uh, once I graduated, I did not want to work in an office and therefore I decided to create my line of uh, jewels because jewels are like gold in your two hands. They're unique and very beautiful. But I understand you started working at an office and uh, then you quit. What was the reaction to with your friends and your family when you quit your job to become oh. an entrepreneur? Um, tout le monde me disait, pourquoi tu ne travailles pas? Pourquoi tu ne vas pas chercher un salaire? Ce que tu fais, ce n'est pas un travail, tu perds ton temps. Ils ont réalisé que c'était un travail après l'ouverture de mes deux boutiques. Quand ils se sont rendus compte que j'ai deux grandes boutiques avec euh, plus de 15 employés, ils se sont dit, oh, c'était un travail finalement. <rire> Oh, they all said, well, why don't you work? Why don't you look for a salary? What you're doing there is not work. Uh, you're wasting your time. They finally realized that I was working when I had my two boutiques with 15 plus employees. That's when they saw that I was actually working. Well, 15 employees, that is clearly an employer and a good successful entrepreneur at that. You. So. So you're wearing one of your beautiful necklaces that yeah. you've made. That is, I yes, show. please stand up so yeah. everyone can see. So how this is one it's of such a jewelry. striking necklace that goes yeah. all the way down. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. a fabulous. This so that was one hand you can beaded. With every it was beaded by hand. Yes, I made it by hand. Ah. And here you can have some. Vous avez des perles de valeur qui viennent de du Niger. Et là, c'est des perles qui viennent du Nigeria. 
bottom pearls, the, the discs, uh -huh. are valuable and they come from Niger. Ah, so a neighboring country, Niger. The yeah. smaller ones are from Nigeria. Oh, okay. Can from I Nigeria. Have yours? Yes. Ah, and we have another. <laughs> I'm, I'm sporting a necklace from one of your colleagues, Siba yeah. from Ghana. Yeah. So another beautiful uh, maker. That's ah, this was yeah, you can see. Ah, J'ai beaucoup de variétés de, de bijoux. J'ai une centaine de modèles. Et ils sont faits de perles de valeur de toute l'Afrique. Je prends des okay. perles de valeur de toute l'Afrique. Je vais vous montrer. J'ai beaucoup de variétés de modèles. J'ai plus de 100 types de différents types de jewels. Et ils sont tous faits avec ce genre de pierre semi-précieuse qui vient de tout l'Afrique. Oh, that's fabulous. And then there is uh, the beads. I'm not sure if it's close enough to see. It's in the shape of an antelope. Yeah. Or, Ça, ce sont des perles qui viennent d'Égypte. Et là, c'est du bronze qui vient du Cameroun. The um, pearls, the gems, come from Egypt, and the bronze comes from Cameroon. Yeah. Ah, ce, sont, ce sont des colliers qui sont très solides et qui peuvent durer 10 ans, 10 à 20 ans. 10 à 20 ans. Et ce sont des, co des colliers qui valent cher. They are quite valuable necklaces, and uh, they are quite hardy as well. They can last you 10 to 20 years. And I understand that's not all that you do. You see the fabulous yeah. hair. <laughs> what is your other product that you made? Je fais des produits pour les cheveux naturels afro. Uh, J'ai uh, deux places où on prend soin des cheveux afro, et puis uh, le client peut rentrer avec des produits faits maison uh, chez lui. Voilà, j'utilise des produits naturels en général et, et ça marche très bien. <laughs> C'est la preuve sur mes cheveux. I also uh, produce natural hair care products. And yeah. Products for natural hair, the sort of afro uh, look. There are two salons where people can come for ah. their uh, hair to be taken care of and also they can go home with these products that are generally very, uh, they're, they're natural and it's been going very well. Oh, excellent. So hair care as well as jewelry. That's very successful. Um, that's great to hear. Um, and some of your colleagues on this program were also doing a lot of food products. We had some mango wine and some sausages and, and things from all over Africa, which was really beautiful and wonderful to see. Like there are many products. Yeah. Um, what, uh, Angel, what is something that surprised you about Chicago? What were you expecting in the United States? And when you've got here, you, it's different. Um, J'ai été dans les pays francophones, dans les pays européens, et je dois dire que là-bas, c'est assez froid. Euh, c'est froid, les gens sont froids, le temps est froid. Et j'étais surprise à Chicago parce que le temps, le climat est bon. Euh, les gens sont très accueillants, ils sont très gentils. Et surtout, j'ai remarqué que ici, les gens sont en synergie. Ils travaillent en synergie, c'est tout le monde qui aide l'autre et ils avancent comme une seule personne. Si tu as besoin d'aide ou d'informations, on te les donne tout de suite. Les entreprises marchent ensemble comme un. Si tu as une entreprise qui a une opportunité, il va prendre les autres entreprises avec, avec, euh, avec lui. Interesting. I've been to francophone countries, I've been to European countries, and I can say that they're cold. They're cold in terms of their climate, the people are cold, and uh, what surprised me coming to Chicago is that the climate is quite warm now, and the people are very welcoming and very uh, pleasant. Uh, I also noticed that there's a kind of synergy. People help one another, and they move forward as one. Uh, if you need information or if you need assistance, you get it easily from people in Chicago. Businesses also work well together. When one business is starting to do well, often the business owner will work to help other business owners rise above along with them. Excellent. Well, Chicago has a very um, a vibrant uh, entrepreneurship community, and I hope, I'm glad to hear that you saw people working together and building synergies, because it is a... a a great place to start a company in Chicago, and, and for a woman, it's we're, we're proud of that reputation. Um, and what was your impression of being selected for this African Women Entrepreneurship Program? How do you feel like it will oh. help you? It's a great opportunity because I meet people that I've never met in my life. It's an incredible chance for me to grow and for all of those who are behind me to grow with me. Donc, euh, quand j'ai été sélectionnée pour ce programme, j'ai juste dit merci à Dieu parce que euh, c'était tout mon travail qui était récompensé. C'était tout le travail des gens derrière moi qui était récompensé. C'était une grande opportunité. 
I'm getting the chance to meet people that I would never have met otherwise in life. And so this is an incredible chance. It's a chance for me to grow and for those who come behind me to grow as well. When I was chosen, I just thanked God. I saw that this was a real reward for my work and a reward for the people that helped me with my work. Excellent. And are you going to work with other women when you get back and help other entrepreneurs? Yes, yes. Um, je travaille déjà avec des, des femmes. J'ai eu du mal à payer mon éducation. Donc, euh, dans mon pays, il est très difficile de trouver un emploi quand on n'a pas de diplôme. Donc, dans mes entreprises, je n'emploie que des femmes qui n'ont pas de chance et qui n'ont pas de diplôme pour leur donner une chance d'avoir un travail et de pouvoir s'occuper de leurs enfants. Euh, quand je rentre dans mon pays, je vais travailler avec plus de plus d'artisans femmes parce que en général je forme celles qui travaillent avec moi je forme toutes celles qui travaillent avec moi et puis euh, je vais organiser un, une sorte de formation professionnelle pour emploi chez moi de 50 personnes pour travailler dans ma marque de bijoux et ça je l'ai appris des autres femmes <rire> je l'ai appris de mes de, ah. mes de mes autres partenaires qui elle travaille avec d'autres artisans et je n'osais pas le faire avant. Mm -hmm. I work with women uh, already. It was hard for me to pay for my education. Um, and in my country, if you don't have a diploma, you don't have a group degree, it's very, very difficult to find work. Uh, so I work with women who don't have a diploma and don't really have many chances in life so that they can have a job and take care of their children. Um, the I'm going to, in the future now, when I go back to my country, uh, work to train people so that they can um, work in my uh, jewelry businesses. I hope to train 50 employees. Uh, and this is something that I learned from other women on the program. I never dared to do it before, but from speaking to them, now I'm inspired to do the same. And I think that's probably one of the best benefits of the program is that the women from all over Africa are meeting each other, building a network, and also building a network with their peers in the U.S. and really building bridges uh, one handshake at a time, as we like to say, at World Chicago. So again, we encourage you to go to our website at worldchicago.org, find out more about our programs, and join us at some of our upcoming programs so you can meet amazing women like Margaret and Ange and Angel and hear more about what's going on in Sierra Leone, Burundi, and Cameroon, and other countries around the world. Thank you, and have a great day. Thank you.